Hello peoples, Digital Mouse here. I want to talk to you about the 4TB upgrade I made to my ROG Allies internal storage and show you some of the accessories I purchased. In a previous video, I added a 2TB Sabrent SSD. Now I'm going to add this 4TB 2280 SSD from Crucial. I'll be using this adapter I found on Amazon to install the larger 2280. One thing I love about the ASUS ROG Ally is how easy ASUS made it to upgrade the internal storage. I first removed the six screws on the back. I had to use a Phillips head screwdriver to do this. Once I got the six screws removed, I used a small plastic pry tool to open the back. I think it's a little easier for me now since I've already pried it open before. Once I got the back plate off, I disconnected the battery. When I made my YouTube short on this installation, I cautioned that you would have to install the new SSD over the battery connecting point, meaning you would have to plug in the battery before installing the SSD. However, a viewer pointed out there were two locations you can unplug the battery. For this installation, I should have unplugged the battery from the bottom connecting point. Back to the video. Once the battery was unplugged, I removed my old SSD. I'll show you what I did with this SSD in just a minute. I plugged in the adapter into the SSD slot, I screwed the adapter in place, then I plugged in the new 2280 4TB SSD, and screwed the new SSD into the adapter. I plugged in my battery, and that was it. I just replaced the back cover. I had to plug in the ROG Ally to a power source in order for it to start up again. The ROG Ally booted up and went into the system BIOS. For this installation, I'm going to use ASUS's cloud recovery program to do a fresh install of Windows and ASUS's Armory Crate software. You do have the option of cloning your original SSD before installing the new one. I'll leave a link in the description to a tutorial using Macrium Reflex software to clone your SSD. I pressed the Y button to exit the easy mode. Then I navigated to the Advanced tab, select ASUS Cloud Recovery, and press A to begin the process. You'll need to connect to Wi-Fi for the download. The Ally will go through the process of installing Windows. This will take a while and the ROG Ally will reboot several times as with any normal Windows installation. Then you'll install Armory Crate. When it was done, I installed Steam and then went about the process of downloading my games over again. A complete tutorial for this process can be found on ASUS's ROG website. Everything worked as normal. I was able to download and play games from the new SSD. However, I did make an additional change to the SSD, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later in the video. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button. It helps the channel. You may be wondering what I did with the SSD I took out of the ROG Ally. For that, I purchased the ROG Strix Arion NVMe SSD enclosure. It will fit the 2280, 2260, 2242, and 2230 M.2 NVMe's. This is probably the coolest SSD enclosure I've ever purchased. It's made of aluminum and comes with a bumper, which also sports ROG branding. For installation, I first opened the SSD with this cell phone pin that came with the device. Inserted the SSD, then screwed it into place. I plugged it into my ROG Ally, and it was immediately recognized. And the cool part about the enclosure is that it has RGB lighting to let you know it's working. I just wish I had a button to open it rather than needing the small pin. This Sabrin enclosure is far easier to open with its button. But I can't deny the cool factor of the RGB lighting, and I would definitely buy this again. This JSOX RGB transparent backplate was another very simple installation. I had to remove the four triggers from the ASUS ROG's backplate. I used the screwdriver that JSOX provided with the kit. I removed two screws from each of the top triggers. I used a small pry tool to pop the triggers out of place. The back triggers had one screw and tabs holding them into place. Now the back triggers have a little spring, so if you decide to do this, be careful when you take it apart. I placed the top triggers into the new transparent backplate, then screwed them in. I did the exact same thing for the back triggers, being careful not to lose the little springs. After I placed the triggers in place, I installed the RGB module. There are a couple of tabs on the bottom and a tab on the top that will help you align it correctly. It fit right over my newly installed 2280 SSD without any issue. The RGB module has its own power button and USB-C charging port. You don't have to adjust any wires on the ROG Ally. Make sure that you use one of the provided stickers to cover this sensor on the Ally, otherwise the Ally won't power on. Now, you see this part of the ally? It looks pretty ugly, right? Well, JSOS provides a sticker in order to cover this area. After I put everything in place, I attached the back plate. Everything fit perfectly. It was just a matter of reinstalling the six screws. Overall, I think the RGB back plate looks fantastic. But, although it looks great, there isn't any texturing on the RGB back plate. It's completely smooth. The ROG Ally back plate has slight texturing on the grip. It didn't affect my grip overall. 
but without the texturing, it really felt like it would be easier for the Ally to slip out of my hand. Now that being said, I played several games with RGB backplate on, and have yet to drop it. My YouTube short on the SSD installation generated a couple of very valid questions regarding heating issues. I decided to add this easy cargo cooler kit. I removed the SSD, installed the silicone thermal pad, then installed the heat dissipating copper plate on top of that. Reinstalled the SSD. It didn't fit as well under the RGB plate, but I was still able to install the back plate over it. I reinstalled all of the screws and everything worked as it did before. I checked the temperature of the SSD by going into Windows settings. I went into settings, storage, advanced storage settings, disks and volumes, and selected disk zero. I found the temperature and status of the SSD under drive health. I used an infrared thermometer to test the outside temp of the ROG Ally. I played Call of Duty in turbo mode at 25 watts. After playing Call of Duty for about 30 minutes, I found disk management showed the temp of the SSD was 59 degrees Celsius. The outside temp was 37.2 degrees Celsius. About 20 minutes later, I found disk management still showed the SSD temp as 59 degrees Celsius, while the outside temp had risen slightly to 39.2 degrees Celsius. I also tested the read-write speed using Crystal Disk Mark. Here are those results. Yes, these results are anecdotal and not scientific, and you shouldn't purchase any of these mods based upon my findings. I will either make another video or post in the community tab if I experience any issues. If you want to protect your ROG ally, then consider this JSOX mod case. I like how its color matches the ROG allies. It's made of a soft TPU and has a plastic plate on the back. There is texturing on the grip, and it covers the ally's sharper angles while leaving the speakers exposed. The top has the appropriate cutouts for vents, the power button, as well as cutouts for the power LED light, a USB-C port, as well as ASUS's proprietary connection slot for an eGPU. There's also a cutout for the headphone jack. The back has a hard shell with vent holes in the shape of the ROG logo on one side. There's a kickstand which folds out and has magnets attached to hold it when it's not in use. The back also has two cutouts which is where you can dock the holder for a battery. The battery holder is a piece of double-sided Velcro attached to a plastic clip. You get two in the pack, one larger than the other. The battery I'm using is the Basius 65 watt charger. It has all the ports you need and you can charge multiple devices at once. Honestly, the only reason I got this battery is because the color matches the ROG Ally. To attach the battery to the mod case, just wrap the Velcro around the battery. Then attach the battery to the mod case with these two clips on the back. It holds the battery onto the mod case well enough, but you will need to be careful not to detach the clip from the cutout on the back. The JSOX mod case also comes with an additional travel cover. It covers and protects the screen, joysticks, and front buttons. It eliminates the need for placing your ROG Ally in a case. It also has slots to store SD cards and a cutout for the USB-C port so you can charge your ROG Ally with the case on. With this, you can throw your ROG Ally in your backpack and feel comfortable that the Ally is secure. Of course, the only issue is that if you install the mod case, then you lose visual of that sweet RGB transparent backplate. You could use the ROG Ally official case. It'll run you about $40. It's made of polyester and is water repellent. It has a soft inner mesh with a built-in fleece compartment to protect the ally screen. The built-in compartment has two pockets about the size of an SD card and another credit card size pocket. You can actually prop up the built-in compartment and use it as a stand for the ally while you play games or watch a video. You'll find the ROG logo featured prominently on top of the case. The words Republic of Gamers along the zipper and ROG on the zipper and on the tag. I've had this case for a while and it's been my go-to case for the ROG ally. It's lightweight and compact size, makes it easy for me to carry my ROG Ally with me. I haven't noticed any wearing or fraying in the few months that I've had it, although I really don't beat up my products. I would recommend it, as long as you don't need that much storage. If you don't already have a set of earbuds or want something specifically for the ROG Ally, then you should take a look at these ROG Zetras. They complement the ROG Ally in both color and design. The case supports wireless charging. They'll connect to your ROG Ally with Bluetooth 5.0. Just open the case. Turn on your ROG Ally's Bluetooth settings, and they should pop up. You'll hear a verbal announcement when they are connected. They fit in my ears nicely and are comfortable to wear. ASUS says their earbuds have 10mm drivers and airtight chambers. I'm not an audiophile, but they do sound great. They have a hybrid active noise cancellation which detects and filters out noise. The Cetras won't replace my Apple AirPods, but I do keep them in my backpack just in case I lose them. There's something to be said about having a cohesive product line, 
The Asus Recurry controller works great when it's paired with the ROG Ally. On the bottom you'll find the Bluetooth pairing button and headphone jack. On the top is the USB-C port and menu navigation buttons. The grips are textured, although I'm not a big fan of this edge. There is a pocket on the back which holds the 2.4 GHz receiver. It has a switch to move the triggers from mouse click to full long press. There is an LED display you use to switch between profiles and to change functions. The buttons use a short press, long press input method. Short press the right button to cycle through the menu options, then long press to make a selection. Use the left button to go back. Once you connect the Recuri to the Ally via USB-C cable, you can go into Armory Crate, then Connect, and the Recuri will show up under Connected Devices. From here you can update the firmware, change the RGB lighting, and assign functions to the back buttons. To play Call of Duty, I programmed two of the back buttons to work as B and Y buttons. I found the controller to be comfortable to hold while playing, and all the buttons, triggers, and joysticks to be responsive. However, the Recuri Pro still wouldn't be my first choice for controllers. I'm going to make another video comparing the Recuri to two other controllers I have. Let me know in the comments below if you've used any of the products that I talked about in this video. Here is gameplay footage of me using the controller.